right, so most of us, uh, we have our sewing machine sitting on something, right? Either it's built into a table, it has a prefabricated stand, it's on a desk, it's on a kitchen table, it's wherever. Maybe you got it supported between a couple of sawhorses on a board. I don't know, but what I do know is the likelihood of your workstation being ergonomically correct for your body probably pretty low, right? Not a lot of us go to the expense and the time of getting a workstation that is ergonomically made for us. And so, unfortunately, this can lead to things like repetitive strain injuries and aches and pains and things that keep us from doing what we love. It's not cool and it needs to stop. So what, what are we to do? What's a sewer to do? Well, I'm not an expert in repetitive strain injuries or what have you, but you know what? I know somebody who kind of is. So we're going to talk to her today. Her name's Andrea Sereda. So um, yeah, she's going to tell us all the things and keep our bodies healthy so that we can do more sewing and make more of the pretty things that we like to make. So stick around. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Stephanie. I'm so that I'm so thrilled that you could be here today. Everybody on my my YouTube world, this is my friend Andrea Sereda, and I'm gonna let her tell you why she's awesome and why she knows so much about what we're gonna talk about today. Thank you for calling me awesome, and I hope I live up to the hype. So I am a personal trainer and I and a health coach. I was working as a counselor and then went through a health journey myself. And I've gone through a lot of things like repetitive strain injuries and other things. And so I have a real passion for helping people live their healthiest lives. But hang on, you also sew. Like, you know I what do. it is to be at a sewing machine for hours and hours, don't you? Yes. My, most of the sewing that I have done is actually costumes. I have done quite a bit of clothing, um, but costumes were my big thing. And so getting ready for shows, we would spend literally full days and weekends at the machines and cutting and just lots of large scale productions. So, you know, 12 of the same skirt, 24 of the same dress. So I have spent my fair share. And actually that was one of, um, one of the things that I had to stop doing with my repetitive strain injury. I had, they thought I had carpal tunnel, but it actually ended up being radial tunnel, which is um, felt mostly in the forearm. And so I had to stop sewing for a number of years and stop crocheting and knitting and all of those things um, because my body just couldn't handle it. And so we, uh, our goal today is to help people prevent that from happening to them because if sewing brings you joy, we don't want you to have to stop. <laughs> we want you to keep sewing and making all of the amazing things that you're making as long as you possibly can. Awesome. Okay. So you have some exercises for us. Um, before we go into that, I just want to mention to everybody that Andrea has very kindly made a cheat sheet for these. So watch the video today, get all the tips and pointers on how to do the exercises correctly. But then there's a cheat sheet that you can actually print out and have near your sewing machine. Um, because are these things that we can do like while we're sewing or before or after, or what's the deal with that? Yeah. So what I've included is I've included things that you can do before you sit down to the machine, but also things that you can do if you're spending lots of time there. Some of the stretches would actually be best to be done after you've already been spending some time at the machine. Your muscles are warm, whether it's because you've been cutting, you've, you know, you've been doing some things, your muscles are warm and that's a really good time to do some of the stretches. Um, and so I've included that. There are things you can do on a regular basis to prevent it. Or if you're spending a long stretch of time on a project, you know, taking a break periodically and, and just taking a few moments to stretch your shoulders, stretch your back, uh, stretch your arms. Yeah. So if you're at the machine and you kind of have that moment of like, oh, gosh, mm. then like that might be a good moment to stop and check your cheat sheet on the wall and do the stretches. Okay. So right now we are going to show the exercises and you've been kind enough to pre-record those so that you could get a really good shot and explain them really well. So we're going to take a look at that right now. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is just our posture at the machine. So when we're spending particularly a long time at a sewing machine, even though we may start with our shoulders back with a nice posture, the longer that we spend here, the more that our shoulders can tend to sink forward. And if we're doing really intricate work, we may find that we're coming forward 
with our shoulders. And so a really great way to reset our posture is just to sit up tall and roll our shoulders back, thinking about squeezing the muscles between the shoulder blades together before we come back to our machine. We want to think about hinging at the hip more than coming forward with the shoulders, if that makes sense. Now in terms of uh, preventing repetitive strain and um, setting ourselves up for many, many years of sewing and handicrafts, we want to be thinking about our, our arms, our hands, and, and our shoulders. And so I like to do some mobility work, getting, uh, getting the wrists moving. So I just clasp my hands together and then just think about raising up the elbows and then bringing them back down. This gives us an opportunity for the wrists to move through their full range of motion and also just warms up the shoulders a little bit. For the forearms, we want to be uh, stretching these out, especially if we're spending a lot of hours here. And so just applying a light amount of pressure to the top of the hand and we should feel a stretch right through the top part of the forearm. We want to be holding these stretches for about 30 seconds to really allow the muscles to relax. And these actually are great stretches to do after you've been doing a little bit of sewing. So after you've been at the machine and you've been using your hands, you've been cutting whatever it is that you're doing, some of those muscles are going to be warm. And so you'll be able to stretch and prevent injuries and repetitive strain. So that's a nice stretch for our forearms. If you ever get tingling or numbness in your fingers from spending a lot of time, um, a really great one to do is actually, I call it happy tendons, but it's a tendon floss. So we take our hand in, in, a, in a fist and we bring it up to the chest and then we're gonna open it up. And as we open it up, we're extending our five fingers. So opening it up and moving through different ranges of motion. So bringing the hand up, bringing the hand to the side and bringing the hand down. And just doing this about three times can really help. So from this side, bringing it to the chest can really help with those feelings of numbness and tingling. This is one of the tendon exercises that they'll often use for people with carpal tunnel uh, or radial tunnel to uh, just keep those tendons moving smoothly within the arm. So three of those on each side. Now, I don't know about you, but I will, when I am spending a long time at the machine, I get pedal calf. You know what I'm talking about? From all of the pedaling, now one way we can fix that is by adjusting ju exactly where our pedal is, but from the motion of the foot coming up and back down, flexing with the ankle, that, we use our calf a lot. And so I'll sometimes use my tape measure. Now this is a quilting tape measure. I like my tape measures really long. You can use it like a yoga strap. So putting this back here. So putting it under here, putting it under the ball of your foot and then just bringing, use, putting a bit of, um, pulling a little bit on that tape measure to bring the toes closer to your shin. And so again, holding that for about 30 seconds and then relaxing and then you can come point your toe ankle rotation and then we can do that a second time on both sides all right another thing that i really like using my tape measure for is a bit of a chest ex a chest stretch excuse me so depending on the kind of chair you're sitting in you may be able to grab the tape measure from behind and then sticking your peacock chest right out and looking forward making sure that your shoulders are down and getting a nice stretch in the front of your chest. You can do this not around the back of the chair also, but again, so I'm just holding it at the back here and then bringing the arms up just a little bit. Fantastic, that's so good for your chest. We spend, when we spend a lot of time, whether it's on a computer or on a phone or at a sewing machine, the muscles right here will, will shorten over time and so doing a stretch like this 
helps return them to a proper length. And then the last one that I'm going to share with you today is one for the upper back and mid back. And so if you're sitting in your chair, all that we're going to do is we're just going to take, bring our arms, getting a spinal twist. If you have a, if you have a back on the chair and it's not too high and you can reach behind, looking over your shoulder, nice rotation for the spine. And come to the center and then up the same on either side. So again, on my other side, I'm just bringing my hands to here. And then if that doesn't feel like quite enough, then you can come back. So on my other side, I'm here or here. And looking over that shoulder, keeping the shoulders down, a little shake. Last thing, make sure that you're getting up from your sewing project about every hour, every half hour to every hour. I know sometimes we get really involved in something we're working on, um, but once an hour, even if you're able to just stand up, stretch, touch your toes, do a few shoulder rolls, you'll be better off for it. All right, so that was super helpful. Thank you so much, Andrea. I really appreciate you going to all that effort for my viewers. I'm just, I'm so thrilled. You are welcome. And if anybody has any questions or comments, I am happy to answer them. If there's a specific body part that they find really is bothering them when they're at the machine or, um, or while they're working on something, I'm happy to answer any questions that people may have and make recommendations. Awesome. So that would, that's probably the next thing we should talk about then. Like where can people find you? Where can they connect with you? You did say that um, for this video for this weekend, Andrew's going to be checking in with the comments um, so that she can reply to comments right on this video. But beyond that, um, yeah, how can people find you? You can come and check me out at uh, journeyhealthstudio.com. And we're also we've got an active Facebook page and uh, Instagram page. So we like to connect there. And so I put tons of free content up just uh, to help people out. I've got a two-week free trial if people are like, hey, I want to get moving. And there's, there's always that as an option. Um, but I am happy to answer any questions people have. You can just check me out there. Awesome. Okay. So, and I will like link all of that stuff below, guys. And don't forget that we have linked that cheat sheet down below. I know for myself, I really need that visual cue to remind me to even do things. Um, and so if you're that kind of person too, go ahead and print that off. Um, I'm just going to check my notes. I think that's all we had to talk about. Thank you so much for coming and talking to my people here and talking to me and just giving us so much great information. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for inviting me to do this because I have been sewing. I remember learning how to sew when I was 12 years old. My mom's best friend gave that to me as a gift for my 12th birthday. I went for a weekend. She taught me how to read a pattern, cut out a pattern, and it's been a huge part of my life. And it was really devastating when I wasn't able to do it for mm -hmm. a number of years. And so whatever I can do to help keep people doing what they love is, uh, well, that just brings me a ton of joy. So thank you for letting me chat with your viewers. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so happy to have had you here. So um, I'm just going to leave us on this platform to say goodbye um, because, yeah, that's all I have for you. So come back next week and we will have, well, we're coming up to Halloween. So I think we'll probably have a Halloween thing. See my pumpkin? We grew those. Uh, and then we'll have more sewing <laughs> tutorials coming after that. So thank you, Andrea. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, let me know in the comments below if there was like an exercise that um, you find that you think is going to be your favorite or that you know really helps you or if there's one that wasn't in the video um, let's have a conversation going like other people do other stretches that they find really helpful so make sure you comment below and we will see you next week bye